Hi, I'm Danielle Hartman. Welcome to Port and PA, a series sharing the stories of Pennsylvania's craft beer industry. Our first stop is Pittsburgh and the nation's first black beer festival, Fresh Fest. Launched in 2018 by Black Brew Culture and Drinking Partners Podcast, Fresh Fest is an engine for collaboration not only between African American brewers, but the Pittsburgh community at large and beyond. <laughs> I had a friend hit me up. He's like, but like the day of the festival, he's like, yo, if I get this ticket, how much is the beer? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, yo, you can tell people don't. Yo, you can tell we've been we've been down for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we don't trust no good nature, nothing like fam. What's the what's the catch? Yeah, what like, y'all about to hit me for? I'm like, bro, let me explain the the concept of the beer festival to you. Black Brew Culture is an online platform uh, dedicated to um, supporting black-owned businesses, black-owned breweries, uh, making connections between breweries and the community, um, highlighting uh, businesses and their events. So we know we decided the platform was helpful in getting exposure to a lot of breweries that might not have the time or the resources to, to get out there and promote their products. Everything about the podcast is about collaboration. It's about, yo, you doing something good, I have a platform, let me talk about what you do, because I rocks with it. Two guys having a good time over craft beer, meeting great people. We met Asa from uh, Brew Gentleman, cool as shit. And he was like, hey, how about you guys do a live episode, like, I mean, at our brewery? You know, afterwards he was like, yeah, we just did this freshman cast with uh, Grist House and Hitchhiker. They would love you guys, you should go do that. We were like, wait, you mean to tell me, like, if we fuck with y'all, we can fuck with her, you know what I mean? And like, they were like, yeah, that's how we get down. Like, we started to see the the camaraderie and the collaboration and like, I mean, that, that, that went on in that industry, which was just kind of weird because you can't go to Home Depot and they'd be like, oh, you like these wrenches? Lowe's got some motherfucking pliers, like, you know what I mean? But they'll do it off the record, like, yo, they got, <laughs> yo, our wrenches are a little expensive, but they gotta pull you in the corner, like, look, fam, <laughs> you could buy this wrench, but you could probably get it down the street. Fresh Fest was definitely the natural progression to black brew culture. Um, obviously, like the support, the network was 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 solid enough. Now, how can we make an impact with what we've created up to this point? That's where Day and I's ideas came together. When I first did the podcast with these guys, we knew right away we had a lot of things in common as far as what mission we were trying to do in the industry. We knew all these outstanding breweries and these great brands. We all got together and was like, you know, how can we have some sort of collaborative effort, um, something moving forward that can like, you know, do some good for the community in some way. And the project that came up was was a, was a beer festival. And so that's where Day and I came together and thought about how does this look? How does this shape out? How do we plan? How do we organize it? And uh, the pieces started kind of falling together. Once we introduced the idea to our network, everybody was on board pretty much immediately. So Harris Family Brewery is a microbrewery based out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We are coming with um, our culture, our style, our generation, our music, our art, and then good refreshing beer. What I want to do is take some cultural flavors and make traditional beer have a cultural flair to them. For instance, the fruitcake beer or the sweet potato pie beer that I want to make or the monkey bread beer. You know, that could be any style. That could be a stout, that could be a brown ale, that could be a wheat beer. You know, I want to do I want to do it all, but I also want to bring a little bit of that cultural flair to it. Appreciate it. Fresh Fest is the first black brew fest in the nation that I believe. 2019 is the second year. Last year we went, we poured, we took our other collab beer. It's popping. We had a great time. The turnout was amazing. 
Fresh Fest is a beer festival that is inclusive to people that look like us and really inclusive for everybody. It's just, you know, intentionally welcoming to people that look like us. Um, and I think that's important. That we needed that in our industry, um, especially since, you know, we go to beer fest and there's usually not many black people. We're the only black people. We're usually the only black people there. Coming from a community that we come from and seeing other people from our communities enjoying what we do is astonishing. It's, it's one of the best feelings you can ever get. Fresh Fest was the first place that we went to as a brewery where people didn't look at us and say, you're doing what? I, don't, I didn't know you could do that it, because they knew that we could do it. And they were like, good luck. There's thousands of festivals a year and they're all white owned, white ran, white breweries. And that's just facts. Finally, someone had the idea and the dream to say, instead of trying to get our people to keep going to these events, why don't we have our own event? So representation is so important in every industry. I think it was right time, right place. Tyler Perry said in a recent interview, you know, we got to make our own table. And that's what we're doing. We're making our own table. We're brewing a collaboration beer with Boneshire for Fresh Fest 2019. It is a Applewood smoked stout. We like drinking up here at Boneshire and we're really good friends with Alan and we've been planning something for about a year now. All right, that's it. That's our fourth time. We are making a Applewood smoked stout, shooting for right around 7.5% ABV, uh, nice full body stout. Kind of the reason we fell onto this is the Harris boys love smoking meat as well as we do. And it was kind of like, yeah, let's, let's go that direction. And so that was kind of what we fell on and, and why we went that way. You know, let's face it, the craft beer industry is tough to get into. It costs a lot of money. And for us, being able to help Harris in general and get involved from that standpoint is a no-brainer. That's a big reason why there's not a lot of craft breweries talk in, in our inner cities because it's an expensive game. Everybody still drinking Coke 45s and still reserves and nobody's like, this is disgusting, we need to drink better. As we come along and grow as a, a partnership, we're going to have younger kids in the neighborhoods like, oh, we can do something else other than play basketball and play sports. What do those guys do? Who are they? Let's be like them. And we're going to change the face of the community or change the face of Brewing. I think there's a large group of people out there that haven't had the opportunity to, to drink a good beer. Or maybe they haven't had an opportunity, but they don't even know about it. So opening a whole nother group of people to that idea, I think is you know, part of the, the bigger picture. It's just a matter of education and knowledge. Once we unlock that knowledge and present it to people, I think you'll see the floodgates open. As a matter of fact, I think over the next couple of years, you're going to see a, an explosion of a black brew culture, to steal that line from Mike and them, that will just expand the industry that much more and allow places to not be stagnant, you know? Because once people know what craft beer is and, and, and how to enjoy it and why they should enjoy it, people are going to come out in droves. The basic premise of Fresh Fest is obviously the showcasing of the black-owned breweries. That's the main focus of the festival. Um, and then second to that is the collaboration efforts that the outreach part of it where we connect businesses in the city. Some of these people are right on the same block or the same brewery or around the corner in the exact same neighborhood and never have spoke to each other or know each other exists. We decided to, to pair them up in a collaborative effort, make a beer, which, um, you know, to us, there's no better way to create a, a relationship than through something like a project like making beer. I think the, the opportunity to collaborate uh, with different business owners and different members of the community through Fresh Fest is, is something really unique to that festival and something really unique to Pittsburgh and allows us to, to meet people that uh, maybe are big craft beer fans or maybe not. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really proud to be partnered with Sam Black from SYLA, Support Your Local Artist. So last year I attended Fresh Fest and I'm not a beer drinker, but I support, you know, minority uh, events, businesses and things like that. And so Day knows that I hate beer. And so he told me to do my own beer this year. Um, and through that process, I like my beer. So it's called Beach Don't Kill My Vibe. Um, and I added hibiscus, passion fruit, mangoes, um, lime juice, and brown sugar. Cause I'm from Jamaica. So we did like a, a, a tropical type of island beer. 
Sam admitted to us that she's not a big beer drinker, and so being able to introduce her to some different styles was, was pretty cool. And as she taught us about her business and what she does and her, what her passions are, we were able to break down a little bit of the, the brewing process. And so we're brewing a sangria beer as our uh, collaboration for Fresh Fest. So brings a little bit of uh, Sam's taste into mixing it with the malt and some, some really great fruit flavors. And uh, we use some hibiscus, so it's gonna have an awesome color and uh, I think appeal to a lot of different people and, and we're pumped to share it in an environment like that where so many people are coming together to celebrate so many growing aspects of what Pittsburgh has to offer. I think Fresh Fest kind of is the introduction to like there are a lot of people um, who drink beer, not only drink beer but have an interest in beer like there's a lot of black brewers and now it opens the door for other people who minorities who are interested in curating their own beer you know to see that the opportunity is available to them you know uh, the space is available like it's just it's an accessible space that you just didn't know that you were it was available to you once that beer is done these entities now have this relationship going where the next time the business needs you know uh, an alcohol sponsor let's say they can go to somebody that they know they, they got the direct phone number and you know, boom! It's it's so these these relationships have been long term. They've been working out very well, and uh, a lot of repeat customers, repeat businesses has come up as a result of it. Fresh Fest is really just a, a, a celebration of beer and culture, and it, it's it's a pretty amazing experience. I mean, there's a lot a lot of vendors there, and not just breweries, just businesses that are that that are all throughout Pittsburgh. And uh, it, was, it was just really awesome. There was live music. Um, it was right down in Nova Place. And this year we're working with Smittix Brewing. The company that I'm representing is Smittix Brewing uh, out of Dallas, Texas area, Allen, Texas. Originally I wanted to do a stout or like a porter because that's, that's really what I'm known for. But you know, after Sean threw the idea out there, it was like, hey, that's gonna be kind of heavy for this time of year. So we decided to do the uh, fruited kettle sour. Fresh Fresh is dope, you know, if you've, you've never come, I would suggest you make, make arrangements to come ne next year. It's a lot of great people, a lot of great beer, you learn a lot of good stuff and just meet a lot, a lot of great people. Well, I think it's important to get diversity anywhere, no matter where you are. In the brewing industry, obviously there's, there's a lot of males with beards, so any kind of diversity that we can stem out and start attracting more people just brings different ideas to the table, really. And that's what diversity is all about, is the different ideas that people can bring to the table and possibly give you something that you never thought of. We got 28 black brewers coming in. We got 45 local collaborations. We've got, uh, uh, we've got 15 live artists. I six, first uh, met uh, Ed and Day um, through the Drinking Partners and they just started supporting things that I was doing as a female brewer too. You know, they saw that that was something different and um, you know, without ever even asking, they just supported me so I knew no matter what they do, that I would always turn around and support them. So I am the founding executive director of an organization called Sister Friend, which our purpose is to provide menstrual hygiene products to homeless um, and underprivileged populations. Last year, I was an attendee of Fresh Fest, which was awesome. I thought Ed and Day did a wonderful job. And then this year, I'm really excited to be actually in a collaboration with a brewery. I've always looked at collaborations as a new creative outlet um, and the way I approach it is I always like to meet someone first, get to know kind of their interests um, and their background too and if they're involved in a certain organization or company, um, get to know and understand that so that I can translate that into a beer. I'm ecstatic to be working with Meg. I think she was the perfect partner. When we sat down and talked originally, we were immediately on the same page about what type of, you know, beer concept, and she's super creative. So really, we it was like smooth sailing. I couldn't ask for a better partner. And getting to know our organization better, you know, she told me the color um, were purple and pink. So I had already kind of had this idea in the background of creating a purple beer um, using the butterfly pea tea and create something really unique that would stand out at the festival. I think that when you're in a festival type of atmosphere, everyone is really open and receptive. So I think it's a way for you to kind of get your message across in a friendly environment, being able to, you know, pass out information and have a really interesting and cool beer to go along with that sends a really powerful message.
the beer industry tends to be more male dominated. So being able to collaborate with a female brewer and bring those two points of view together and actually share what we do with the festival attendees is gonna be very impactful. Fresh Fest is just something that like Pittsburgh should be proud of. It, it's just inspirational to be a part of. Obviously, African American presence in craft beer is is so small. You know, sort of the idea behind it is get the African American population to get into craft beer and understand you know that scene. And we're an industry that is made for everybody, and it, it's it's just a perfect way to get more people interested. Day and Mike pair people up with black artists or musicians. This year I'm with a guy named Jared Evans. I run uh, Radical Trivia. We do uh, various trivia shows around the uh, Pittsburgh area. It's much rowdier than a lot of the other kind of national companies or whatever. We do a lot of, you know, we swear at people. We. Uh, I encourage them to yell at me, uh, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's a more fun time than a lot of other trivia shows. I was fortunate enough to actually go watch one of his shows last night and the dude is an absolute riot. When he says it's like in your face trivia, he's not kidding, like he is in people's faces and uh, lets them have it. Also my band, Midnight Rose, we're, we're gonna play here today actually. And, and we'll, we'll be wearing some ridiculous costumes. We, uh, we, do, it, we do it hard. Shoe Brew collaborated with us doing the Radical Trivia Ale. It's a 10% Belgian strong ale. And this couldn't have been like a more like perfect collaboration. I literally met this guy and within eight minutes we had this entire beer planned out start to finish and it was just like, all right, we click. Like this was perfect. And he's like, I want to do something like crazy over the top. Uh, I want to do like a really high alcohol percentage beer, but I want it to be something that people want more than one of. It's pretty good, I gotta say, it's pretty tasty. I would, you could, it's not heavy like a regular Belgian beer, so uh, you can drink a little more of them, and like I said, it's 10%, so you're gonna, you're gonna know that you drank them. Uh, Zach is a cool dude. All the other beers are uh, video game themed, which is, I, I'm a nerd myself, uh, it's pretty cool, so. He's really big into video games, which is cool. I'm really big into video games, so we have all this like stuff in common. And it's a guy I would have never met, you know what I mean? If we hadn't been paired up for this partnership. Those collaborations were like, wow, there were so many people that, that didn't know much about craft beer and their introduction to craft beer was a collaboration. I mean, it's wild seeing, you know, the branding that came out of it, the labels, the, the food, like all of that, like the conversations, because it wasn't just a rap lyric on, a, on the side of a can. It was a real collaboration with like folks and they've continued long lasting relationships yeah. and they've also expanded into the communities, um, both here locally and ac across the country. So all those dope people were doing all this dope shit and we were like, y'all don't know each other? Now you do. It's just dope, man. When you put people together, like it's a great feeling. We're Nasland Bow Ties. We make 100% handmade bow ties from repurposed and reclaimed fabrics and materials. And we source and rescue those materials from all over the place, rather it be designers who have designer discards to upholstery companies, you name it. Last year, I was really, really sad because I was out of town during the Fresh Festival, and I am super into like community and building communities, specifically, especially like women entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs of color. So anytime there's something big like that happening, I kind of want to be there. So I was sad when I came back and everyone talked about how amazing it was. And I was just like, I need to be involved in that festival somehow. I had reached out to Mike and he kind of was just initially like, um, how do bow ties and beer go together? So then I told him that we had did like this like small collection for the Big Poor, which is held at Construction Junction. And they like flew off of the shelves. It was like this like idea of like beer and bow ties and something about it just really got people excited. And he was like, okay, well, you know, if that's what you want to do, we'll pair you with a brewery and we got paired with Fury, and one thing led to another, and we're here. <laughs> Pittsburgh's a diverse city. I mean, if you look at the different areas around, you know, if you're going from, you know, Homewood to Lawrenceville to neighborhoods in Polish Hill, I mean, they're, they're just all different 
ethnicities. So for Fresh Fest to be here, I think is a, a very good home. This year we're working with Knott's Land. The beers that we're gonna do for that are, are gonna be bow tie themed. So for Fresh Fest, we're all gonna end up wearing bow ties. Uh, we're gonna make cans. We're, we're doing two beer collabs. The one is gonna be a Cocoa Puffs type stout with a certain tea that makes it taste like Cocoa Puffs. And the other one is going to be a, a Goza with butterfly peas. I think they like the Goza, so we decided to do a, a Berliner Wise. Ryan reached out and he was giving us like, he was like, so what kind of beers do you like? And Nicole and I were just like, we kind of more so like wine. So I guess we like sweet beer or like, you know, fruity beer. And so when they came and we did the first meeting, we were actually really, really shocked at how many of the beers we liked. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I just have had the wrong kind of beer all this time. So now I'm a, I'm a little bit more, you know, inclined to drink a beer here and there. I think collabs are awesome. I, I absolutely love them. I think it's fun for everybody. We make it an event, you know. We usually get a bunch of food, we drink some beers, we hang, hang out, we bullshit about different things. Not only are you creating something that's art or a can that um, is sought after just because it's a collectible, but you're also getting to try a beer that these two put together and see how it, it comes out. People want to support local independent folks like people want to know where their money's going and know that like it's going to a good cause and so I think those same like-minded people who are willing to buy spend a little bit extra on a really good beer are gonna think more intimately about like spending that money in on a really nice bow tie so I think that's the, the connection and also like it's similarly like production and manufacturing so I've always respected the space I hope to see a lot of smiling faces coming to our table and tasting our beer and just like getting really excited about the possibility of, you know, like these, like these collaborations. I mean, collaboration is so fun and it's so exciting that most beautiful things come out of collaboration. And I think that that's what we're gonna see. I think we're gonna look around the Fresh Fest and say, wow, there's so many creative individuals in this city and in this region, and even from outside of the region, who have just thought of all of these amazing things. So I'm excited to see our space and how our things come together, but also how the whole entire festival comes together and just like all in the name of like collaboration. Drinking partners Day Bracey collab with friends from Apis Meadery for a special Fresh Fest brew along with Trogue's Independent Brewing. Apis is just like a, a love of mine. I've been working on it for about 11 or 12 years now. The goal was just to use honey as a vehicle, not necessarily be a traditional meadery. Uh, we didn't want to drink out of horns. We didn't want to celebrate Vikings or pagans or anything like that. We just wanted to be basically a beer brewery that uses honey instead of barley. I figured we could focus on 100% local honey, uh, as much local fruits as we can use, and then whatever else we can come up with, we can come up with. Dave is uh, one of our closest friends. Um, he's like family to the podcast. When Trogues reached out to us, they said, we, we want to do a collaboration, which was huge for us. We're like, oh shit, like Trogues? Trogues is known for doing wild shit. Like, hey, you know, Dave is over here. It just seemed like a match made in heaven. So um, yeah, we threw it out there and they just were like, yep, let's do it. <laughs> this motherfucker got his legs way too open with these pink pants. Like, I can't tell. <laughs> Day and I have been buddies for a while. We do a comedy show locally to Pittsburgh. It's called Hurry Up, Say Something Funny. He threw us a cool collab last year with some local artists. And this year he said, man, I really got something special for you guys if you want to jump on board with this. And they told me what it was. And I'm like, are you, are you joking? I've been trying to work with Trogues for 10 years. I just never, it's not a thing you can just like walk up and ask somebody to do. Pittsburgh in general, I mean, that's our, that's our backyard. That's, we have Philly on one side and we have Pittsburgh on the other. Trogues is Pennsylvania. Trogues is Central PA, but it's also very much the Philly and the, the Pittsburgh world. We're, we're deeply rooted within those communities. Um, it's always interesting working with other people that make beer and don't make beer and, and hear their takes on how ingredients taste to them and smell to them and how they use them and what inspires them to, to make flavor. Dave brought up wanting to do a peach cobbler type thing, so we kind of took that and ran with it. It's a peach and apricot honey ale. It's triple hopped, um, so it's uh, meant to mimic peach cobbler. We wanted to do something to kind of throw back to like the southern community, and we thought dessert beers are kind of trending, mostly in the stout range, so we wanted to kind of go a little bit further away from that since it is like a middle of August kind of festival. Sat down with Trogues and 
wrote some stuff, changed a few things around, and really ended up with something that I think is very different, very special. Yeah, I did too, man. Like, he surprised me. <laughs> when we do a collaboration, we try to bring in a different way of thinking about it that you don't have to be a brewer necessarily to input in your opinion on, on aroma or on taste or on the beer should be. We try to frame it up in a way that um, you don't have to have a, a brewing science background or 20 years of brewing experience to craft this, this recipe. We can handle that afterwards, but we sit down and just talk about ingredients and taste and smell and pull out where they, what their intent is. So if we can, if we can drink the intent of the brewer in our head, we can then brew the beer. Usually whenever I like, I like I brew beer, like I just show up and like pour carefully measured, like, you know, cups of things like, like <laughs> into a ton. And I'm just like, all right, you know, picture is a cool, but there was actually some, some decision-making in this, um, which was scary. Cause like people were gonna drink this shit and I had the decision like, you know, so um, yeah, that was, it was pretty dope. So the honey that we used is local to each area's wildflower, just to kind of bring out what it is in this season, this time. Um, and then we tried to pair up a bunch of different hops with it and, and peaches and apricots and just kind of let the, the wildflowers kind of do their, their own representation. The interesting thing about honey is where it, where it comes from is what it tastes like, what the flowers are like around it or what the bees bring in for, for the flavor. Um, so every year, really every season, you should be tasting the honey and, and adjusting if you want to adjust. Some, some recipes you don't have to because um, you want to embrace that, that change. We just got it fresh fest. Keep it simple. <laughs> Trogues, they opened up in Hershey and, you know, a community kind of grew around that. We want to kind of see the same thing, you know, in Pittsburgh, you know, with Fresh Fest, you know, cultivating a black culture of drinkers who, you know, will eventually, you know, brew and maybe someday open up a black brewery. And with that, the same economic power that, you know, like a Trogues did. I mean, Trogues, they employ people from around the town. They promote from within the company. So you could start off, you know, wiping tanks and become a brewer. That was very inspirational. So we want to see something like that, you know, in Pittsburgh, we have no black middle class neighborhood. It'd be dope to see a black owned brewery with black patrons and, and employees. And, you know, if you want to attract outside, you know, youth and investment, like a brewery is a great way to do that. Instead of just coming to Pittsburgh, getting your education and leaving, you know, maybe you stick around for a little while because there's something to do. All right, you're asking for it, so here it is. Epicast. Listen to this. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to a special live episode of the Drinking Partners Podcast coming straight from Fresh Fest 2019. <laughs> we are in the building, we are strong. We got a very special guest here. Very special. Um, the oh. man, the myth, the legend. Mr. Renaissance himself. Everybody give it up for Garrett Oliver. Say what up to the people. <laughs> so for those who do not know, I mean, I know everyone in the building is familiar, but we do have some people who listen to us on the internet. So let people know who you are, how you came into the beer game. Well, I am Garrett Oliver. I am the brewmaster of Brooklyn Brewery for the last... <laughs> And I am 400 years old. <laughs> this is a beautiful occasion for me because I've been, you know, in this game for 30 years, and I have, ne and I have never, ever, ever, ever seen a room like this. Yeah. I was sitting as the chair, you know, whatever for uh, uh, the Africa Beer Cup in South Africa several weeks ago. And even that room didn't look like this. Wow. So <laughs> we we yeah, more well, Africa than Africa? Well, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, my entire career, people saying, wow, it must be fascinating for you, like an African American, to be making beer. It's like, we've been doing this for 5,000 years. Shit. Five. You know, been doing this. Thousand shit. years. You know, I think that it, it behooves all of us to learn, you know, where all of our cultures came from, you know, and that yeah. this thing always belonged to us. And not, not only us, I'm not interested in excluding anybody, but that non-exclusion includes us, you know, because right. as I was saying before, you know, it's like they say, oh, look, they, we have George Washington's recipe for whatever else. We have George Thomas Jefferson's, you know, Thomas Jefferson's beer. You know, we've got James Madison's beer. It's like, 
George Washington didn't brew anything. Not a damn thing. <laughs> he did not brew anything, not himself. <laughs> you know, when you, read, when you read the letters, he says, my man. Mm. My man. Yeah. Yeah, my man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, even before Fresh Fest, I, I didn't know many black brewers other than Garrett Oliver from Brooklyn. Like, he was the only one I really knew of. Not only for other people, but myself. You know, it kind of brings the attention, hey, there are other African-American brewers out there that, that can do a really good job. There's also women in the brewing community that you don't get to see a lot of. And we actually have some pretty good women here in Pittsburgh as well. I saw Fresh Fest as something almost necessary for our industry in a way. Ed and Day taking this torch and guiding us to this other part of creating more diversity and inclusion in our industry was just something I'm like, this is, this is what I have to do. This is what I want to do. This is the necessary next step to help create more of that in our industry. Fresh Fest is an all-inclusive kind of thing. It, it just kind of breaks down barriers, breaks down borders, and makes it so that every single person that has any interest in craft products is totally invited, welcome, and, and having fun. It's just about coming together as a community and kind of supporting each other and, and basically introducing you to other artists and brewers and things of that nature. Even in my space, in the, you know, craft artisan space, it's very rare that you see a successful creative who's of color who's like growing and launching and scaling businesses that are handmade. So in that same respect, it's important to kind of continue to highlight and support the, the people of color who are really working kind of behind the scenes with a lot less, with a lot less support and a lot less understanding to like barriers that we may face. And I just think that we can't do it alone. It takes, you know, opening up the space to other people and having other people also be allies in pushing forward the movement. It works to the negative. Like, when you're black, you actually have to have proven. Y'all clap. Y'all, what y'all don't, y'all don't like the guns? And I think the industry is definitely expanding culturally. Um, to see these, these black owned businesses getting recognized, doing major collaborations with bigger breweries, it's just the exposure that the industry needs at this point in time. Um, you, you start to see different ideas pop about because of the cultural influence that some brewers are bringing. Um, so it's, it's, it's challenging the industry a bit, it's changing the game somewhat, it's, it's introducing new, new concepts, um, and that's always, a, that's always a good thing. The thing that we did well was we built a festival and we brought beer to it. Like so many of the beer festivals, the beer festival model was get a space, yeah, pack it with beer, maybe some food trucks and, and maybe a little up. bit of like, yeah, maybe a, maybe some music in the background and then talk about beer and drink beer and, and do the beer thing where like we built a festival where there's like things to do. Like there are like people are networking like and talking and having a good time and listening and enjoying the live art and things of that nature. And at times forgetting that they have an empty glass. Zach Shoemaker uh, down at Shoebrew, he came to me afterwards, he was like, it was dope seeing these fresh faces because people that were genuinely for the first time having beer, like like having a, like a, a, discovering a beer that they liked and was like, I didn't like to see the, the look on their faces. Like it's rare that brewers get to go to an event and introduce people to beer. The support has been phenomenal. Um, people from all over have, uh, have, have made the journey here. To, to last year and now this year, um, everybody's extremely excited to be here. So we feel it's only right to bring it to another city if we can. Definitely can continue, definitely can expand because the foundation of it is something that's never gonna change. You know, collaboration, diversity, you know what I'm saying, economics, like all of that, it's real. It's something that is here to stay and it addresses all of that, you know what I'm saying? So there's always room within it to expand because you can you can start adding programs, all types of shit you can do with Fresh Fest. If it does continue and it does grow, I think those are some of the reasons why it does because it's bringing new faces to the, to the industry, also a new business model, I mean, to the industry. To find out more about Fresh Fest and what they have in store this year, check out their website and social media. Thanks for joining us. I'll leave you with a brewery spotlight on one of our Fresh Fest collaborating breweries, Shoe Brew. Till next time, cheers. I was stationed in San Diego while I was in the Marine Corps. I um, 
became infatuated with craft beer while I was out there. This was uh, 2004 to uh, 2008. I'd spend all these weekends going out and visiting different breweries out in the area. Time and time again, I found myself going out to Stone and ended up needing to get a part-time job because I was, I guess, uh, living too lavishly for what a young Marine makes. And so I, uh, I went and applied for a job at Stone and I became a uh, prep cook in their kitchen. It got to the point where I'm like up against re-enlisting or not. And I decided, you know, I'm gonna move home and I'm gonna talk about opening up a brewery. What happened was I moved home and I got a job working for Verizon Wireless. And then I spent like five years talking about opening up a brewery. It was at Verizon that I met my wife, Erica, and she spent a long time alongside me, listening to me tell everybody that I was gonna open up a brewery, and she finally was like, listen, it's a little embarrassing if you don't actually do it, so how about we stop either telling people or we do it? And I was like, all right, well then, let's do it. We didn't have a lot of money, um, so we are like, well, why don't we try to find a restaurant that exists and we rent it. We don't have to do as much of a build out, we'll get a small system, and we'll, uh, we'll do the brew pub thing. If you're gonna do a brew pub kitchen, you need to put absolutely as much care into the food as you will care about the beer. And that's our philosophy on like, everything we do. Like, if we're gonna do it, let's try to do it right. We launched this restaurant in 2013 and we're really committed to um, sourcing locally and sourcing seasonal ingredients. So there was, there was that piece to it, which we felt was really strong. And um, then I'm slinging away on this like little half barrel Sabco brew system for the first uh, year that we were in business. Things haven't changed too much. They're just bigger now. We try to be pretty aware of what's going on in the industry. You know, we w really wanted to get into uh, packaging our beer into cans. We went all in and bought this really nice automatic canning line and we're doing one or two at minimum can releases a week now of new beers and that's sort of like what we've taken on as a brewery as sort of like our new, uh, our new philosophy over the last year and a half or so is that we're, we're constantly pushing out new beers and um, have really trimmed down on like what we would have previously had as our you know, flagship brand, so to speak. Uh, we still have you know, one or two or maybe three, depending on the season, beers that we consistently brew. But aside from that, everything that comes out is always new. If we like something a lot, you know, we'll repeat it, but we're finding it a lot more fun to be like constantly able to be creative. Hazy IPAs had started to take off at that point, and we were really waiting until we had the equipment in place to do them to our standards, you know. We didn't want to put something out that was subpar in that term, especially with a beer style that was so poignant. Anyway, we get these new tanks in and we're like, all right, we're gonna start doing some hazy IPAs. They're delicious. We had customers who were bringing us stuff in from Trillium, Treehouse, um, obviously, like the Alchemist. All this stuff was showing up here and people were just like begging, like, please do these hazy IPAs. We're like, all right, we're gonna do it, but we're gonna do it our own way. Like, I, first of all, I'm from Pittsburgh. I am not going to give New England credit for anything except for cheating, so we're not calling them a New England IPA for sure. I'm a big video game guy, specifically Nintendo stuff. I sat down and I'm like, all right, we're gonna do pixelated IPA. We're gonna do all of these beers with some sort of like video game reference behind them. And that sort of like took off immediately. I think it really like hit people's nostalgia, you know, points. And the first one that we released was called Jumpman. And Jumpman is what Mario was called before he was Mario. It's what he was called when he was, um, well, Jumpman in Donkey Kong. And it was crazy, you know, we, we, we announced Jumpman on Facebook and we weren't expecting much. You know, it was the first time we were releasing cans of anything like that. And we like, you know, the day comes, we look out the window and there's like, you know, 10 guys standing outside, like waiting to come in and we're like, cool, there's a little bit of, you know, hype for this beer. That's, that's kind of exciting. 
we were doing one a month, and we were seeing like you know that sort of hype continuing to build and build to the point where we released Magic Mushroom, and we look out the door and we had 300 people waiting to come in, and it was just like, what the fuck is going on here? You know what I mean? Like, totally unexpected, and I mean, we think we were doing really good beers, but it was just like, this is, this is cool. Like, people like care about this series. And I think that's exactly what it is, though, is that I think we were doing a really good job with beers, but I think people were so connected to like that portion of their past, you know? Future for Shoe Brew, immediate plans, we're gonna to try to replace this small system and get us one that can fill one of our tanks in one batch instead of three. We're looking at probably opening another restaurant sometime in the next year or so. Um, we're looking to have another direct-to-consumer outlet. We take a lot of pride in like how we serve beer and uh, the way that we like speak to beer and talk to people about it, as well as like the food and providing pairing and we just love what we do and we want to be able to do more of it to a bigger audience.